yet, so. Do you have me? Am I on? Oh, okay, good. Well, look, there's a much bigger crowd than this morning. Uh, <laughs> my first crowd was uh, about 6.30 this morning, and the chairs were empty, uh, so that was a much easier crowd for me to preach to. Uh, my name is Paul Baker. I'm one of the elders here at Cornerstone. Uh, I was originally supposed to preach the doxology, uh, which isn't uh, in most Bibles, uh, and, you know, I'm a rebel, so... Uh, decided that wasn't for me. Uh, you've had enough of the really good uh, expository preaching from all these people, uh, and that's really not my style. So uh, I really thought at first I was just going to pray and uh, kind of walk through how to pray the Lord's Prayer. And uh, so I had an outline. It was literally like an introduction and the sections of the Lord's Prayer, and I didn't really feel comfortable with that. It's probably pretty scary for you too, because who knows what would happen. Uh, then, uh, so a week later, I typed up something, felt really good about it, uh, felt kind of good about it, uh, prayed, and uh, was like, no, this is not it. And uh, so I prayed again, and was like, all right, God, you got to do something. And uh, woke up the next morning, and Father said, uh, prayer is something you build on. And I was like, okay. And things kind of started to fall into place. And so I... Uh, um, Changed what I had done a little bit and, and uh, had it all squared away. Came up yesterday morning and practiced uh, to an empty room, and everybody kicked me out. It was horrible. <laughs> and uh, so uh, yesterday afternoon, I typed a whole new one, and here we go. Uh, says it's 17 minutes long, so, you know, you'll be out of here pretty quick. Um, let's see. First, I want to say that prayer is something that's personal. Uh, everybody has a way that they communicate, you know, with each other and with the Lord. And so, you know, I'm just talking about the way that I communicate and the way that prayer works for me. Uh, so these are just examples on things you may or may not be able to implement in your own prayer life. Uh, so how do we pray the Lord's Prayer? Uh, you know, that first line, Our Father. Uh, that was probably one of the most difficult things for me. I've been a Christian almost 12 years now, and uh, the first seven years, uh, I did not know how to pray to God the Father. And um, I tried three different times. I really just pressed in to, uh, like, teach me how to pray, teach me how to engage you as my Heavenly Father. And the first two times failed miserably, and the third time was success. Uh, I had this breakthrough where Father really just opened my eyes to uh, how I can talk to him. Uh, that was about five years ago. Uh, about that time, I was able to uh, just, like I said, it just kind of changed the way I related to God. Uh, so I'd wake up in the morning now, and it's good morning, Father. Uh, the next two phrases are either I need you or I love you. Uh, I'm pretty desperate uh, for... Uh, my need for him or my love for him. Every now and again when I'm feeling really brave, I'll pray, uh, here I am, send me, but that doesn't happen very often, so uh, you've got to be pretty brave to pray that one. Uh, so then, uh, you know, I'll just walk through my previous day as I'm talking to him, uh, like, you know, all those victories I had the previous day, the way I was able to, you know, shine for him, the way I was able to have a conversation and share just any, any little piece of God's love. Uh, I'll thank him for those moments. Anytime that I, you know, fell short and, you know, had an opportunity and didn't take it, I'll pray that he can help me to overcome those moments and to see those moments in that uh, time. Uh, but it really took seven years of... Uh, my uh, being redeemed to get to that point. Um, so that was, you know, a lot of years just to learn uh, our Father, right? I mean, uh, y'all just had two and a half months. Y'all should be experts. Uh, but <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't always work like that. Uh, so our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Every now and again, I will end that section with hallowing his name. That's not really... Uh, something that I remember uh, regularly, uh, you know, when I'm especially thankful or whatever, uh, that just comes natural, uh, but otherwise, uh, you know, sometimes I just forget that. 
Um, what's the next line? Uh, kingdom come, yes. So about a year ago, uh, to be exact, one year and 53 days ago, uh, I noticed something in me. Uh, I've always, since becoming a believer, just wanted to escape and be with Christ, which is better by far. Uh, the only problem with that is not the desire to be with Christ, which is better by far, it's the escape. Uh, my heart just didn't want to deal with my problems, your problems, my business's problems, any problems. I just wanted to go home. Uh, <clears throat> Father, one year and 53 days ago, uh, opened my eyes to this, and so I began a section in my prayer that said, waiting on him. And uh, the next part of that is, your kingdom come in my life and through my life. And uh, so what I wanted, uh, what I talked to Father about is, I need help to overcome this desire to escape. Uh, and as you're working that out in my life, I know that um, your kingdom is going to come through my life. Uh, you know, I don't need to escape because you're going to be there with me. About 80 days in, uh, Father did something, and he, you know, it was that moment of change uh, where I really just saw the desire to escape change. Uh, not completely gone, he's still working on me, but uh, it, was, it was noticeable to me. And uh, so that was the day I changed from waiting on him to just waiting and um, continued to pray his kingdom come in my life, but I prayed a broader kind of, uh, I want to be free from sin uh, so that your light can shine more brightly through me. Uh, so day 300 and I'm on the next page, so there we go. Day 332, uh, I changed that section from waiting to marathon. Uh, I still pray his kingdom come uh, in my life and through my life, but I needed to see that uh, this life is not a sprint. It's a marathon. It's a journey. Uh, and, uh, you know, he's going to be with me. Uh, as I run this race, he's going to go before me as I run this race. And I just have to be patient uh, with myself, with uh, just uh, what he's doing. Because uh, I know that uh, even if he took me tomorrow, uh, which would be okay, uh, uh, he's working something out in my life. Uh, it's not something I have to fret about you know, falling over this sin, I'm just going to get up tomorrow and he's going to help me through the next day. Um, so, uh, this is also the section that I, where I pray for others. Uh, I'll pray for my kids who are not redeemed and I got a list of about 20 that I pray for. Uh, and that really helps me remember also that, you know, it took him 35 years before I was redeemed. You know, that was a long uh, journey for him to open my eyes. And, you know, he may do the same with my kids, and some of these people are older than 35 that I'm praying for. And I have to realize that his time frame is different than mine. And so I just have to trust in that. Uh, so, let's see. Daily needs. See, I got the notes right here. Uh, daily needs was always a hard one for me. Uh, just, uh, there's so many more things critical than my needs. Like, there are people in this room suffering from so many things, illnesses and, and just heartache and just countless other things. And so I would just not pray that. Uh, and then one day, Father knocked me upside the head and said, what? He said, hey, if you're not healthy, if I'm not providing your needs, how can you help others? And I was like, well, you're right, Lord, I don't know. Uh, I really need... <laughs> your strength uh, to get me through the day. And so uh, this section of my prayer uh, in the morning uh, can be really short or really long. A short one might be, uh, you know, on those days that Ryan makes me have an elder meeting at 5.15 in the morning. Yeah, I'm up already, sorry. Uh, well, on those mornings, I may pray something like, I need your strength, I need your wisdom, I need your power, I need your peace. You know, just those short uh, quick little things. On a longer day, I'll go into more detail. 
so like I need physical strength for my body. Uh, if you're not going to, uh, I need to renew my bones and my muscles and just give me that strength that I need uh, to get through the day. Uh, if this journey, if this marathon is going to last me a long time, I want a body that functions and works. And uh, he's given me relatively good health, and I sometimes thank him for that and uh, carry that through. Uh, I pray for mental strength. You know, he's given us all minds. He's given me a mind that works and that uh, can think and sometimes think, you know, unless I'm on stage in front of a bunch of people. Uh, and uh, so, you know, I want to pray for focus and clarity and acuity and uh, these sorts of things so that I can use my mind to bring glory to him. Uh, I'll pray for emotional strength, uh, you know, when you don't sleep or you're tired or cranky, you know, your anger and your frustrations and bitterness and all these things. Up. And you don't want that to fuel you. You know, I don't want to become overwhelmed by my emotions. Uh, <clears throat> instead, I'll pray for the heart of Christ in that moment. Uh, I want his love and his compassion to fuel me. I want that to fuel the work that uh, I have, that he has for me this day. And uh, so... Then I'll, that's three, three, one more, one more strength. I pray for spiritual strength. Why would I forget that? Oh my gosh. Uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, Ephesians says, uh, we do not fight against flesh and blood, but against the rulers and principalities of the air. And, uh, you know, how are we going to fight a spiritual battle without spiritual strength? Uh, you know, we cannot fight spiritual battles, battles with our flesh. And uh, so... You know, this is definitely something I need. There are definitely, uh, you know, just deep, deep, dark problems that people have and they suffer and they struggle with uh, that um, may just be their flesh or it may be uh, spiritual warfare. Uh, but regardless, I need that strength to be able to stand against the schemes of the adversary. And so uh, that's four. That's four strengths. Okay. Uh, wisdom. I'll pray for wisdom. I'll pray for uh, love, and I'll pray for peace. Uh, one of the things God's given me, even since before I was a believer, was just this peace about me. Uh, I've always been thankful for that peace, and, uh, you know, it would be easy to lose it, easy to take that for granted, and so I almost always remember to pray for that. Let's see, daily needs. Daily needs have changed over the time, you know, uh, and that first couple of years of uh, prayer, it was really just, I need you. Uh, and now we've got like really detailed daily needs, uh, but that's just how it is with life. Oh, uh, yeah, not the one I wanted to do, but forgiveness is next. Forgiveness. Let's see, 88, 88 days ago, you know, I just label and number things uh, for my sake, but you get the joy of hearing how many days I've been struggling with things. Forgiveness, I've been praying that for 88 days. I usually start, I always start that section out from, with a verse from uh, 1 Samuel 12 that says, Far be it for me to sin against the Lord by ceasing to pray for you. I will instruct you in the way that is good and upright. And then I also pick a verse from Philippians that says, I always pray with joy. Now, uh, why did I <clears throat> start that section? I want so much for you. My heart just truly aches uh, looking out at the potential that y'all all have, the potential to pray, the potential to see people healed, the potential to see um, just to intercede on behalf of others, the potential to see people redeemed, uh, the potential to see your neighbors getting love from you both here and to the ends of the earth. But what? Fear and apathy and kids' activities and worldly pursuits and desires are preventing this. They, they stop you from achieving the full potential that God has for your life. And this is a struggle because I, for me because I know what God can do. With just the few people that God has used in this church, we have seen amazing things. And if every single person in this room would stop and receive the Spirit of the Lord and His power, imagine what He could do with this small congregation. The ends of the world would be shaken. It would just be shaken. We would see new life. 
Uh, anyway, uh, your potential is just way more than y'all could ever imagine. And so as I was complaining to Father uh, about this, he uh, said, well, why aren't these people doing that? And I said, before I said anything, actually, he said, because you're not praying. And I said, oh, well, uh, that's pretty humbling. Uh, I, will, I will do that. And so, and it wasn't that I wasn't praying for this church. Uh, Y'all know that I do. Uh, it's just that I wasn't praying exactly what God wanted. And so, 88 days ago, he's on me. And uh, I am praying diligently uh, for just his love to penetrate your hearts and to change uh, the desires that we have from away from these worldly things and towards these heavenly things uh, so that we can see this change. Whew, that was hard. <laughs> uh, yeah, I haven't really seen a lot of, I haven't seen the change I would like in me uh, praying that prayer, uh, but I have seen that change in you. I've seen, uh, I'll point generally over here, someone who had a very specific prayer answered, uh, uh, just a sign of God's love for them. Uh, and, I've, and I've had countless others, countless, I've had several other stories in the last 88 days uh, of God doing that work. And so uh, it keeps me going. All right. One more section. Well, those all kind of fit with the Lord's Prayer, but this last section doesn't uh, really fit with one specific section of the Lord's Prayer. And so if you were here in the first service, you can't answer, uh, but maybe someone else can guess. What's the one section? I have lots of other sections in my prayer, but what's the one other section that I should talk about? Uh, that Paul Baker would talk about. Anybody? Prayer, prayer and love, all right. You were in the first service, you don't get that. Man, cheater. <laughs> love. Uh, what would it be if I didn't get up here and talk about prayer and love? Hello, it's me. Uh, so, uh, love. Uh, while it doesn't really fit with a specific section of the Lord's Prayer, it really fits with the whole of the Lord's Prayer. So the whole of the Lord's Prayer, we see this love for God, the hallowing of his name, the desire to see his kingdom and his glory, and just this awe and this magnificence and this love. And then in the second half, we see a love for uh, his love for us to have our daily needs and our forgiveness and all those things. And this is a love for uh, people. 268 days ago, I started this uh, section specifically, and I started with the verse from Deuteronomy 6, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and all with all your might and resources, and these things I command you today shall be on your heart. And then I'll just pray uh, for individuals and specific people. I pray that they will receive that love, that they will be desiring to seek after that love of God. And uh, then I'll pray for the prayer ministry of the church because I want to see, because uh, I know that as the prayer ministry of this church grows, that more and more of his love will abound in this place. And so, let's see. Okay. Oh, yes, quote. Um, At the end of the day, prayer comes down to loving God and loving people. That wasn't my quote, but I really would like to like copyright that or something because that sounds like me. Uh, prayer comes down to loving God and loving people. Um, and that's what we see in the Lord's Prayer. So, obviously there's so much more uh, to my journey, uh, and obviously I took a whole lot of liberty. You know, I'm trying to squeeze 12, 12 years of my growing in prayer into 17 minutes. Uh, and um, But what do we see? We see that prayer is something that gets built on. Uh, so at the very beginning of my journey, you know, I'm just praying, God, I need you. Uh, and seven years into my journey, I'm praying a little bit more. Uh, you know, I'm praying that deep love for the Father. Uh, and, you know, now almost 12 years later, I've got this prayer life that Father's given me. Uh, not perfect, not something, uh, you know, never satisfied. I always want more of him in, in my life and more of his love just to... Uh, exude out of me, uh, but uh, 
you know, these things take time. Uh, he's going to continue this work in me uh, until he takes me home. And I'm not trying to escape. Uh, so uh, that's a good thing. Let's see. So how do I recommend? Man, did I skip something? Oh, I hope not. How do I recommend you pray the Lord's Prayer? Well, that just really depends on where you are. Uh, let's say you're not praying anything at all. Uh, so you just pick a small part of the Lord's Prayer and pray that. Uh, you know, I need you takes only about a second. And I'm pretty sure you all have time for that. Uh, if you don't, something's wrong. And, uh, and that's something you can build on. You know, it's just uh, take something small and allow God to build on it and to grow it into something more. He wants you. He wants to see you transformed by his love. He wants to spend that time with you. And um, so, yeah, you just have to commit. Uh, you just got to commit. And he will be faithful to do the work. He will show up and he will do the work. Uh, let's see. Not praying, recommend. Ah, uh, yes. What else can you do? You know, you're not the only one who doesn't pray. Uh, so if you're the, one of the people that's not praying, look around the room, there's someone else not praying. And uh, you know what helps? Accountability. Greatest thing in the world that we all hate to have. Accountability. <laughs> Uh, you know, when you lose heart and you lose uh, that feeling of connection with Father, uh, what's going to keep you going? Someone else's connection with Father. I have the privilege of having an entire congregation share stories of their prayer life with me and the things that are happening. And so it's really hard for me to not lose courage in my own life, but to not gain it back by seeing it in yours. Uh, and so if you're just sitting there by yourself and not uh, you know, hearing stories of other people's prayer lives and being encouraged by that, uh, you will lose heart and it will be hard to continue that. And so you know, just doing that in community group, doing that individually or as a you know, uh, congregation, uh, I'll take all the stories you wanna share with me uh, if I get to hear greatness of your prayer lives. Uh, I wasn't pointing to anybody. Let's see, what else? Oh, so I do pray, but I uh, am stagnant. So, well, I just told you how to overcome stagnation. Someone else. Uh, one of the things that I'll say is I'm a words person. So God speaks to me in his word and through words in books and through words in his Bible and through words from speaking to me directly. And... Uh, but not everybody's a words person, so I get that. Uh, but those are things you can use. You can use other prayers in the Bible uh, to uh, you know, spur on and see and see how other people overcame these things. You can use the Psalms. You can use just books on prayer. I've read dozens, so if you need a recommendation, I'll be glad to recommend one. Uh, just come to my office. I'll pull one off the shelf and give it to you. Uh, you can use other people. But what if you're not a words person? There's someone back there. There's a lot of people in here. Y'all are music people. Uh, you know, uh, praise is a part of prayer. Uh, and uh, what better way to uh, get your heart in order than to sit uh, and listen to some praise music, uh, some worship music that just stirs your heart's affection to him. And through the overflow of that worship and that love that you receive as you're uh, just resting in that music, uh, you just let that praise come out and those prayers come out. And uh, I'm sure there's other kinds of people. Those were the only words in music were the only ones I wrote down on my list. Just trying to keep it under 17 minutes for your sake. Uh, so, small, no prayer, stagnant prayer. And then we got, I asked in first service, but there was nobody. I'm looking for the person who's like 18 hours a day, reaching the third heaven. Praying, anybody? Because if if you're there, that's I need you. I need you. Like I'm I'm trying to learn and grow. Uh, my prayer life is not what I want it to be. Uh, and so, if you know that person, just send them my way. Just text me right now. Anybody? You don't have to raise your hand. I promise. Uh, 
you know, what are we, what are we striving after? Uh, not perfection, you know. This is not what he's asking. Uh, you know, you're going to fall short. You're going to forget to pray. You're going to, uh, you know, you don't have to pray all of these little sections. Uh, that's not what this is about. This is about developing a love and a relationship with him. He wants to, as he's built this prayer life in me over the last almost 12 years, uh, and, you know, what is he going to do over the next 12 and the next 20? And, you know, he's just going to continue to grow uh, that in me. That's what he wants to do with you. He just wants to build on that. And so uh, I just, I want that. I want that for you. Uh, I want that for him. I want that for, so that we can all go home. Uh, and uh, enjoy him forever. And so, there you go. That's my encouragement. Prayer is something you build on. Commit. And now we're going to pray. Father, you are good. You are so, so good. And I know that these words of mine uh, will accomplish nothing apart from your spirit. They will accomplish nothing apart from your spirit. And I just want your spirit to move now, Lord. I want it to move in the hearts of the men and women in this place. I want it to stir their hearts' affections for you, Father. I want them to feel your love and your presence and your power in their lives, Father. I want them to be encouraged and just transformed by this, by you, Father. I want them to be transformed by you. I want them to know the power they have through your spirit. I want them to know the authority they have. All authority was given, and you gave that authority to us so that we might be sent out into this world and we might shine brightly for you, Father. Father, I want much for these people. I want much for your church. These are your sons and these are your daughters. They need help to overcome. We need help to overcome these things that hold us back. Can you do that for us, Father? Can you help us to slowly overcome the things that keep us from experiencing your presence? The sin in our life, we want to put it to death. It has already been crucified with Christ. And we just need you to help us overcome it. We need your help, Father. And we know that you want this for us. You have promised to complete the work that you began in us, Father. You have promised this, and we know that you will do it. Father, I pray. For the prayer ministry of this church, I pray that you would make us a house of prayer. You promised us this too. You said your house will be a house of prayer. And this is a desire of my heart, Father, and it is a, the desire of your heart. And so I know that we will have this. I know you'll give it to us, Father. love you. Pray these things in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen.